Please listen carefully. Well, hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Christy Jansen. And I'm Summers McKay. And we are part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to help us all get focused on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy, growing mushrooms-worthy podcast. Today is Friday, April 15th, 2022. Uh, Happy Tax Day, Christy. Oh, it is. Although it's not due until the uh, 18th this year for some reason. I wonder why they because it's Good to Friday. Delay it. I think probably. Oh, it's Good Friday. It's good oh, Friday. Yes. It's Easter yes. weekend. Happy Good Friday. Yeah. So it's Good That's Friday. Right. It's sort of <laughs> tax day. It's tax ish day. Tax ish day. Exactly. Potentially um, a holiday weekend, depending on what you celebrate. For my family, it is an Easter weekend. We have had a week of getting ready for the Easter Bunny. So. Pretty exciting around here at uh, at Brennan's yes. at Brennan School. Yes. I, you know, it's just it's really fun to have a two and a half year old when it comes to holidays <laughs> because everything is well, magic. Yeah. So yeah, and at Brennan School, they spent the week basically researching bunnies, which is so adorable, right? And they have bunnies on campus, and so they've gone and fed the bunnies the right foods. And Brennan comes home every day telling me what's healthy for the Easter bunny to eat, and it's very cute. So. Yeah, I like it. How are yeah. you going to spend your weekend? Anything fun planned? Well, I have a, a friend, uh, a friend's baby shower. She's uh, having her first baby. So we're doing that for her. And it's so fun to, you know, for all of us to come together mm-hmm. and um, celebrate Sarah and baby Leo. And everybody's <laughs> going to be like <laughs> face commando and everything. Every, uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, uh, I mean, I don't know. If everybody, I I do have a few friends who have, for their own reasons, decided not to be vaccinated. So mm-hmm. I don't know how comfortable they'll be with all of those people, but uh, it'll be outside, so it yeah. should be fine. Oh, um, fun! And it's a it's pretty nice spring weather here in California. Yeah, it's windy days. It's much cooler. It was super hot la- like uh, two weeks ago, mm-hmm. a week ago. Mm-hmm. Not like last week. It was super hot. This week has been very very pleasant. Um, even chilly. I'm wearing a little scarf this little, morning. So little red yeah. scarf, drinking mm-hmm. out of your Optimus mm-hmm. Daily mug as we do mm-hmm. the record. You know, the, I'm the, channeling. I'm channeling that growth energy. Exactly. That Optimus Daily mug that Christy is currently drinking out of is available to our Optimus Daily ambassadors. Anyone who is an ambassador or a super emissary receives an annual gift. And we are just about to start shipping out this year's gift. So ambassadors and super emissaries, thank you very much. Look for something in the mail. It's coming soon. So Christy, I was listening to the news this morning on my way to yoga, which thank you for continuing to encourage me to have this practice. But I, yeah, I got, I got on to I'm sorry for you to listen to the news. I know it's it's challenging. I was on NPR and wow, I -hmm. was stuck behind a slow moving car on this one lane road to my yoga studio and the news was horrible <laughs> and really depressing well, i mean and well, yeah between like shootings in the subway yeah. and truck strikes and slowing down at the border and, oh and an um, etsy strike also there's, oh the etsy there's strike etsy strike oh and god <laughs> The horror, the horror, Summers. I know. Plus the war in Ukraine right. um, and uh, global warming and tornadoes and Well, exactly, because there was a big tornado in our neighborhood. Yeah. Power outages in, in uh, Puerto Rico. <laughs> I, I was pretty depressed. I'm not going to lie. I walked into yeah. yoga and I did not. It's so rare being in the position that we have at the Optimist Daily. Um, we obviously have to consume a tremendous amount of news to find the good news. But I generally think I've been effective at moderating my news sources. But today I kind of felt like I got hit by a truck by negative news. And uh, mm-hmm. it didn't feel very good. I it, no, it took no. it took forty minutes of yoga before I felt a little better. In the last <laughs> twenty, I was finally finally at peace. But I think well, that's we, a good. We cue, have a few right? tips for you. Yeah. yeah, we have a few tips that this headline I was, was going to actually touch on myself. I'm leading the discussion on 
is all about this. I, we have three tips for practicing news resilience in a world of negativity bias, which there absolutely is. We've written about this before. Not only in news, but in general, we have a, a bias towards paying more attention to what's going wrong as opposed to what's going right. And it makes real good like sense mm -hmm. because if everything's going fine around you, that's just – you take that for granted. You don't have to – you're not, your life is not a threat, right? It's like, that's fine. It's when you've got, you know, the line coming after you or the, you know, the, the, the river that you're about to get swept away in that you really have to pay attention and get yourself out of that situation. So it's sort of hardwired in our brains to pay more attention to the, the breakages in our, in our social fabrics or the, the ways that things are, are not working. Yeah. When you have a news media, which is largely, reliant upon keeping our attention. That's the business model. And if we pay more attention to things that are going wrong, there's a distinct bias in negativity reporting. The focus is on what's going wrong. And this is reflected in the media. This has been studied multiple times. The, this article actually refers to a study from the New York Times revealing that mainstream media outlets carry a disproportionately negative bias in their reporting. And it's partly... Even the stories and the way that they get framed is always about the what's going wrong, and you have to go down to the very bottom. To maybe there's a paragraph about somebody who's trying to address that problem. Right. It, but mostly, it's about finding the the rascals out there. We report lots about corruption, but there's for the one corrupt politician, there's you know seventy five decent, hardworking people who are trying to make the world work better for the, their constituents. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, but all you read about are the the awful people in the world. And reading a lot of news, it's easy to get caught up, swept up in the somewhat false sense of reality that everything is always going wrong. Mm -hmm. And while life is not all sunshine and roses, this onslaught of information is uh, overwhelming. And while, you know, it's important to stay informed, and they say news is, quotes, history in the making, there are plenty of reasons to maybe... Uh, not get so swept up in that and not let it completely overwhelm your sense of reality. Right. Not make you think it's actually mm -hmm. everything. It's just right. the thing we're being it's shown. Just, yeah. Right. And even, you know, question how things are framed sometimes. Anyway, mm -hmm. these are just three tips. This is just a short little story, but you know, three tips for how to practice news resilience and uh, help you stay positive. First of all, reduce your news consumption. Because unless you are actually in the middle of a war zone where you probably won't be able to access a lot of news anyway, keeping up on hourly news updates is not generally necessary. And it certainly will not do you any favors in terms of your anxiety. Sometimes it's hard to turn away if there's something going on. And it's especially if there's breaking news, it's really hard to look away. But by putting in rules in place for yourself and maybe limiting your news reading time, maybe you only read the news in 30 minutes a day or mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. you can reduce that doom scrolling time and try to recenter your brain and setting aside those specific moments, which are maybe sandwiched between something like a gratitude practice and, you know, kissing your kids before you send them to school. I don't know. It's something that's really positive and, and right. excites the, the love centers of your brain. Is sandwich it in between a great cup of morning coffee and a yoga practice. <laughs> so it doesn't yes, consume uh, yeah, like, the entirety of like, your day. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like you, you said it took you 40 minutes of yoga to stop, you know, your the mental. The 20 minutes of negativity. Spinning. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on your drive. Anyway, but that's that's a, a great habit to get in place. It'll lift your mental health. It'll make you feel more like you have control. And anything that's super important you're going to hear about, you don't need to scan the headlines countless times. It's hard. I do it too. I am always opening my little news app on my phone. Mm -hmm. Second of all, take action. When, you know, if there's something that's going on that you really don't like, then obsessing about it doesn't make it better. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so taking action, on the other hand, usually does make you feel at least like you have some control. So if there's something you're reading that really upsets you, first of all, 
take stock and wonder, like, why am I being triggered? Mm -hmm. Because headlines are written to trigger you. Stories are written to excite your outrage or your your uh, fear. And if it's if there's really something going on there, what can you do that would be meaningful that might help people in that crisis situation? Mm-hmm. Whether it's donating or educating yourself or educating people around you on the counteractions that could be important. Um, it just, it gives you a, that sense of agency again. And finally, you know, read the Optimist Daily, which everyone listening is already connected to us. That's great. Everyone who's reading. So this is sort of a throwaway one in some ways, but we are trying to connect our audience to ideas they wouldn't necessarily think about. People who are really coming up with solutions, trends that are going in a positive direction, ways to get involved in a positive way in the world. It's it's really about, you know, while we sort of are joking about Read the Optimist Daily, even though it is about shifting focus and the Optimist Daily <laughs> offers a lot of opportunities for alternative focus when you find yourself neck deep in negativity. The best way, you know, they say, right, it takes four events to counter one negative experience. So that's why we've got 10 positive articles. Let's say you read three bad headlines, you know, come read 12 good articles on the Optimist Daily, right? So it is about having a tool to shift that focus. Yeah. I know that I felt better, one, about sandwiching it in between, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Scheduling it, scheduling my news, and then also then coming together and taking action by acknowledging it with you that that was a really icky experience. And then also reading positive stories on the Optimist Daily about things that are good in the world. So- I have taken this particular article to heart today. Yes. There's other news sources that are also yes. informative, but try to shy away from the, the sensationalized right. hyperbole. And know that if you are inflamed, then it's because the intent was likely to inflame. So speaking of inflammation, right? Uh, well, my headline is also in the brain area on what we can do to trick our brain into more positive behavior. My headline reads, psilocybin therapy can positively change our thinking patterns. No. Mushrooms are magic in more than one way. We recently wrote an article about the ode to the marvelous mushroom. And, you know, just mushrooms are fantastic for so many things, whether it's improving long-term brain health, breaking down plastic waste, becoming coffins. They afford incredible neural communication between forest plant systems. And now there is another benefit of mushrooms with a growing body of research that confirms they can help fight certain types of depression. Researchers have made a major discovery in the therapeutic nature of psilocybin, a hallucinogenic compound found in so-called magic mushrooms. Now, Basically, they help us limber up our brains. New research from the Imperial Center for Psychedelic Research at Imperial College London shows psilocybin working in a combination of neurology and psychology to fight depression. Basically, it affects the software and the hardware of the brains. Now, research shows that psilocybin makes the brain more flexible with participating patients showing increased and continued neural connectivity for weeks after psilocybin-assisted therapy. The control groups without psilocybin did not show the same improved connectivity. People suffering from depression can often find themselves in a rut, repeating the same negative thought patterns over and over. And what that is, is a lot of it is a disintegration between the different brain functions that exist, right? So you, you get In this repetitive cycle, because there's disintegration for that, your brain moving to focus in a different way. Psilocybin-assisted therapy can actually connect the brains and limber it up so the patients have the ability to not just think the same negative thought, but instead open up new channels of positive thoughts and perspectives. This offers an alternative potentially to antidepressants. I have been very open with my communication with the world that I do uh, and have relied on antidepressants for depression and anxiety throughout the course of my adult life. And For so many people who do take SSRIs, this idea of opening up another option, another tool should be something that we welcome with joy because the findings are important. For the first time, psilocybin works differently from conventional antidepressants, making the brain more flexible and fluid versus what some of the SSRIs do, which are elevating certain 
certain chemical compounds in the brain. So it's just, it's an exciting alternative. It seems that part of what's going on is, is the actual basically rewiring, rewiring or finding mm-hmm. f- re, uh, more flexible connections so that in, part of where we get caught in these negative thought loops is that it's always easiest to go in the same routine ways of thinking. We're mm-hmm. kind of lazy. And mm-hmm. so, you know, when you're primed for that kind of thought, those kind of thought patterns, it's really hard to break from those right. habits of that kind of thought. And psilocybin seems to help us lower those habitual ways of thinking and break, make new connections. And it seems to stick exactly. a lot of, uh, you know, the research is showing that it actually, with just a few targeted interventions in a therapeutic setting, oftentimes it can really have a profound lasting effect. Right. And it's about building new neuropathways, right? It's about right. having new exactly. access to yeah to, to different decision-making or um, associations. And having had a traumatic brain injury, I know that the brain is amazing and can find its way back into, you know, basically it's like a whole freeway system in there and it can build new highways and psilocybin can accelerate that. And then once the highways are built, not just rerouted, but new neural pathways are built, that has more lasting effect than Mm -hmm. just a rerouting. So I love this story. I think it's very interesting. I really look forward to a time when there is increased access and availability for psilocybin to mental health patients, because I think that uh, the world is definitely going to improve when we can have access to that tool on a wider level. So we were discussing in the pre-record earlier, you know, what whether or not the psilocybin industry or psilocybin tools would follow a similar pattern to the cannabis industry in some, some places in our country, in the United States, it has opened up. There are places in the world where psilocybin is far more available and readily usable. And I look forward to that becoming a rollout for all of us. So even those of us here in Texas. So looking forward to it. Christy, what else do we have to look forward to on today's Optimist Daily? Well, other headlines from today's news feed. Chile's president moves to and improves a rundown part of Santiago. Bueno. Mm-hmm. Formerly extinct in uh, quotations. Woodpecker turns out to be still alive and pecking in Louisiana forest. That one was hard for me not to choose because you know how much <laughs> I love my birds. <laughs> True. There's an innovative mesh fabric protecting crops from even the tiniest of insects. From the Supreme Court to smoothies, five favorites from our Optimus Editor-in-Chief, and that is me. Ooh. So I am contributing to today's headlines. Uh, you check out my thoughts on, you know, five things that are inspiring me, touching me in the moment. <laughs> ah, yes. What else, Summers? Well, we'll get the <laughs> scoop on matcha tea. That is another one of those ingredients that people are madly in love with, and we're going to help you understand why. The UK is building a huge software mine for the world's largest radio telescope. It's getting a brain. Researchers use new AI to advance solar cell manufacturing, and the largest study on schizophrenia reveals genetic secrets. That and much, much more, as always, is available on the Optimist Daily. Thank you all for listening with us and joining us for positive conversation. We promise to continue to share good, positive, solution-based stories with ideas on how you can participate in this changing world and ensure it is changed for the good. If you haven't already, and you didn't get the hint at the beginning of this show, we are a reader-funded, listener-funded news organization, and we rely on your support to continue to deliver positive news. Consider becoming an emissary on the OptimistDaily.com for as little as $5 a month and support reader-funded independent journalism. Thanks, everybody. Let's keep the Optimist Daily free to all who need it, supported by those of us who can. Have a great weekend. We'll be back on Monday with more solutions. Bye, guys.